Welcome into our overtime segment here at SportsSource.tv and on our YouTube channel. I guess you could be watching us there as well. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you being with us. This segment brought to you by Blue Smoke Cigar. Not only is it the best place to go and enjoy a cigar here in East Tennessee, uh, but it's also a great place to go and get cigar gifts for the cigar aficionado in your life for Christmas. They got uh, single sticks, boxes, uh, they've got uh, great deals on the number of, if you buy this, you get this, if you buy this, you get this too. Uh, they've got the ashtrays, they've got lighters, they've got cutters, and they've got a great staff that can walk through any of that stuff if you don't know a thing about it, but you want to get somebody a good set of cigars or a good accessory. Blue Smoke Cigar, they've been around forever. You might have known them with their previous name, Smokin' Joe's. They were around forever and ever under that name, but now they opened up the big, big, uh, club out there in uh, in West Knoxville, right between Rafferty's and South Peters Road. Check it out, Blue Smoke Cigar. I am joined by Chuck Cavalleras down there, Ryan Callahan right here, Jimmy Himes, Josh Ward. Uh, look, usually we take Twitter questions, we carry over topics. I just got one topic we're going to bring up here and discuss. Uh, Tennessee, this may sound melodramatic or something, we showed it last week. You haven't had a top ten team. You haven't had a finished. Uh, you haven't finished in the top ten in sixteen years. You haven't won the SEC in twenty years. Those are the longest streaks ever in school history. That's about the longest top ten drought by two. Your previous long was eight. In your sixteen years, you haven't had a top ten finish. You throw into that all of what happened this week, and what that and forget how people are spinning it wrong, and the national people don't get it. That doesn't matter what you say. It's how they view it. So when they look at Tennessee and you've got all these people across the country saying, that's a mess, that's toxic. You've got an administration that's weak. You've got a fan base that'll go after you at the drop of a hat. You've got social media that impacts these people to where they roll over. You've got one coach after another fired. You keep churning athletic directors. I ask you, how devastating, is this devastating uh, or Put it another way, can Tennessee recover from this? I don't think that's a ridiculous question. Can Tennessee recover from this as a football program? I think Tennessee can recover. Uh, I don't think it's a knockout punch, but it is a big punch to the gut, I think, of uh, for Tennessee football because uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And right now, a lot of people around the nation are pointing and laughing at Tennessee. And uh, Tennessee fans can come back and say, this isn't embarrassing, we're, we're taking it back. But it still matters what others think of you in terms of coaching candidates, recruits, and the stories that are being written about Tennessee, whether you think they're wrong or not, are not helpful to Tennessee's program. So the fact that all of this adds up, and they're using history, it's not just this past week, I think they're using the past several years, as John mentioned, I think that's a big part of why these things are being said about Tennessee, and it adds up as time continues to pass. And when we talk about recruits, we're talking about guys that are 16, 17, 18 years old, and we're going back a very far way into their early part of life when Tennessee was last having major success. All they know is a football program mm -hmm. that's been meh on occasion and this nonsense that always seems to be playing out in one way or the other with this program. Uh, Tennessee, uh, <coughs> excuse me, can recover from it. The question is, you know, is it going to be in five years or 15 years or 25 years? Are we going to be talking about Team 150? Right, and that's what I, when I say can, you know, that's, that's what I'm getting you know, at. And, I don't and, it, and it may be extended <coughs> time, John, before. Yeah. The, the next coach they hire might be a guy that can turn around and win quickly. He's not going to inherit what Kirby Smart inherited in Georgia because they don't have as many good players here. But if they get the right guy in place, yeah, they can get it turned around relatively quickly. But, boy, the, the track record indicates it's going to be hard to do it soon. I, I don't, yeah, I don't think this is a knockout punch by any means for Tennessee's long-term prospects. Uh, you know, again, can they get it back quickly? This roster is, is as much of a deterrent to that as anything else. But I, I, I think this program can come back. And I mean, we've seen much more dire situations than this in recent years. You know, people wondered, can Penn State come back from what they dealt with? Yeah. Will Miami ever get back on a national stage? At one point, we wondered, will Alabama ever get back? Well, they had a pretty rough decade there in the 90s and 2000s. So we've seen this before with similar programs. The fact that Tennessee, again, has the resources, a better recruiting base now than they've had. There's a lot of things still going for them. If they make the right hire here, will they be competing for championships in two years? You know, may, maybe not, but they'll get back there at some point, I think. Good points, one and all, on all of those schools. I will only say that I bet none of those schools had gone 20 years without a title and 16 years without a top 10 finish yeah. prior to the NCAA mm -hmm. crushing mm -hmm. blow or the Penn State scandal. But those are good 
to keep in mind. Chuck, look, can it be fixed? Sure. In 20 years or five years, you may hire the next Nick Saban. Philip Fulmer might hire the next Nick Saban. But to me, you're getting the further you get from what you want to be, and then you add this to the mix. I don't. It seems like it's going to take more than just one hire to change the national oh, and, perception of coaches. <laughs> and, and does anybody else sit here and say, how did it get this bad this fast? You know, all of a sudden you're winless in the SEC. You're, you're looking at things just blowing up left and right, and now you've got to make a hire. And even if you get back to that eight and four level, that's not going to be good enough. So then you're just looking at churning this all over again in three to five years. So. I mean, I, I think it just shows how crucial the decisions are that are going to be made next. It's, an, it's another great point in terms of how fast this all went south. Not, you know, two weeks ago we were talking about how football went south, okay? You were 5-0, and or were you 6-0 and last year? You hit 5-0 and five and two yeah. years ago, <laughs> uh, last year still to me, 2016, 5-0. You're ranked in the top ten, and now yeah. you've not only fired that coach and that staff, you've blown up an athletic director, and something that could go on longer than that is – all of this struggle between boosters behind the scenes, who's running the show, how much money are they kicking in, are you going to have the money you've had in the past? That's, that's amazing. It's an amazing <laughs> nosedive from where you were. It is. Uh, there, I have always said, when people have told me, well, we're never going to get it back, I always point out, look, in, in the modern history of college football, there has only been one program that was a national title contender winner that just fell off and never came back. And that was the University of Minnesota. You can go check their history. Modern football, they were up there. And then, and I don't know enough about gopher history to tell you why, but for some reason, they couldn't get it back. They lost it. Everyone else has gone through peaks and valleys. Alabama's haven't been as long as some, but they've had them. They were three and nine, four and eight in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, they have, uh, you've got Miami, which has been smoked a time or two. Oklahoma had a long drought after, uh, after Barry Switzer. Southern Cal had a long drought before Pete Carroll. Texas, it happens. But I think now the paradigm may have changed. I think Tennessee has such power in its fan base, and they brag on it, hashtag Vol Twitter. And social media is now such a driving force in our world. I mean, a fifth of Americans use it, and yet people react to it like it's 100% of the people. I wonder if that hashtag vol Twitter combined with this new age could be a, a blow to Tennessee that prevents it from getting out of that rut and becoming a Minnesota. And I know that people go, you blame it Twitter. Uh, I'm saying that's an issue. And if, you're, if you've said at any point this week, we're undefeated, we took down a coach, then you just underlined what I said. You agree with me. You may not like it, but if you're talking about how great you are on Twitter, Okay, you're just backing me up in what I'm saying. I think it's a concern for coaches. I'm not saying that the fans should have no power. You're going to spin it. It's not what I'm saying. But at the same time, if coaches look at you and they think it's pure democracy rather than a republic where, no, we're getting this guy. No, we're not. We're getting that guy. Where if it's not a representative government, I don't know how many coaches want to go work there. That's the way I look at it. Um, Part of what I think is that, that there's not one hire out there right now, John, that's going to unite the sand base. It's not because they're, they're so splintered. Yeah. Now, you'd have some that maybe uh, <laughs> there's some you'd be surprised that don't want him back. No. But my point is the only way you're going to get a lot of these guys back is to win at Neyland mm -hmm. Stadium. You're going to have to win 10 ball games. You're going to have to win a conference championship. That's the way to get them back because I don't care who you hire from here on somebody, there'll be a higher percentage of Tennessee fans that just won't like it because it's not my guy. Because there's so much, even when you get to that point, there's so much you, you got to get over the parity. Look at how many SEC programs, especially in your division, you have to climb over now right. to get back to the top. It's not yeah. like you've got two or three that are down and two or three that are doing okay. I mean, you've got some of these programs in your own division are looking about as good as they have for a long time. But here's the thing, even if you find the right coach, all right, let's say you get the right football coach, you win 10 games. Does this Davenport stuff, does it stop swirling? Is that, I mean, what about the Anderson, Haslam, Ergen? What about that stuff? How does that do? See, I don't know that 10 wins even answers that. To me, that's why it's more troublesome right now, is it's not just, well, we got to win ball games. 
that's part of it. But you don't just you also wonder what is the next story that causes yes. mass hysteria well, in yes. Knoxville? Because we just we just anticipate whatever is going to be next that ends up becoming a problem for UT. I think the more games you win, the less hysteria there is. Okay, well, that's true, and, 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 and that's, I, that's probably part of the other issue is that you could you could even introduce a coach this upcoming week. You could, you could bring in Les Miles as the head coach and T. Martin as the offensive coordinator and talk about getting Tennessee back to where it is in championships. And in the short term, I think that would make fans feel better. And then if you go six and six or seven and five next year, and then in 2019, if you've lost at home to Georgia by three touchdowns because Georgia's in pretty good shape, that's that's why winning still has to happen, and it's difficult to point to anything in the immediate future that says Tennessee's going to win where fans expect Tennessee to win. Right, and that's one reason I see this in this higher. Now we're looking at it in terms of Mac Brown or Les Miles, and I think most people would say that's a stability hire. Correct? That's kind of a tourniquet. I don't think anyone would look at that now. They somebody have a like stability that. AD. Somebody, yes. Somebody, there you go. Somebody may, may come in here, win three national titles. Maybe the hat has his second win if he gets the job. Okay, possible. But... I think most people would look at that and say, okay, you're, that's a tourniquet hire. You're trying to stop the bleeding, stabilize everything. Ryan, it's been 20 years since you won it. I think it's pretty dangerous to be here now looking at a stability hire. Okay, he's going to stabilize you for the next five years. And then, then after we're 25 years, after Tennessee's 25 years from its last SEC title, when it's 21 years from a top 10 finish, then we'll aim for the top again. I, I don't know how that plays, and I don't know that that would – I understand it. I'd probably do the same thing, but I don't know that that's going to play well. Yeah, and, and well, and frankly, I don't know that Tennessee is going to just go for kind of the, the, the tourniquet hire, so to speak. I think I think Philip Fulmer – this this search is still – I think it's a complete reset in some ways, and I don't know that Philip Fulmer is going to swing for the fences entirely, but I think there are some names that could either come back into play or names that were not in play before that could, mm -hmm. could come into play now. So I – I don't think they just want to go that route and say let's let's find a guy who can stabilize things, go eight and four, something like that. I, I think they're looking at this as a chance to to fix this search from the from the get go. We'll see if it turns out the way they want, but I think they would still like to bring in somebody that's a more proven winner. Takes two to tango though, and that's my fear. So let's turn mm -hmm. that next question around. This place looks toxic. Okay, uh, Philip Fulmer, legendary coach here, uh, certainly well known out there in the. How much of an impact will he have, or do you think he can have, in terms of selling it? There's certainly one thing to selling is you have to love something. He loves it. You know, mm -hmm. find somebody who loves it more than him. So, and I think you're right. I think there's nobody in the world that would love to walk in and say, splashy hire right here. I think he'd love to do it. But do you think he can take all that we've seen here, whether that's the booster nonsense, the admin backing, backing out of deals, uh, the revolt, can he package it and have Jeff Brom, let's say, go, yeah, this is looking good to me now? No. But you don't think so? No. I mean, not, not to some of those. I, 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 don't, I don't think so because I don't think this is like a, a Jeff Brom, just as an example. Right. I don't think this is his destination. And, and I, don't, I mean, he'll, he had already said he had his eyes on like a Notre Dame or a Louisville. That's why Tennessee fans are saying, you know, how come you know, we can't get somebody to come in here? It's not their destination. It's, it's viewed as too tough to win here. And so even if you, if you get somebody else, what if they're just here a year or two and another job opens up and you're back to square one? So you've got, like Fulmer's, I think it's really important that somebody that wants to be here and is going to commit to the long haul because there's been so much turnover. That's one of the big problems over there. You've got to have somebody who can do the job and will be here to stay and wants to be at Tennessee. The hard thing is to find a long haul. Because mm -hmm. I think Les Miles would come, and I think Mac Brown would come. I don't know if David Cutcliffe would. I think Kevin Steele would come, those three. They're all 59 or older. Now, you're going to get five years out of them, seven years out of them. I don't know. Seven's probably about the max, I would think. Yeah. So, and a lot so of fans want that, to, they want that to be T. Martin. They want mm -hmm. T. Martin to be their Scott Frost, who just left yeah. uh, Central Florida to go back to home to Nebraska. And if T. had done anywhere what Scott Frost sure. did, yeah. yes. Yeah. But he hasn't been a head coach or done those things. Right. I'll, I think it's risky. I'll say this in terms of Philip Fulmer being able to sell the job, there is one thing about him being in place that does help them. And I think you did have to worry about this. I think some coaches were at least hearing the scuttle and asking mm -hmm. questions about Bill Snyder at Kansas State. And, and that mm -hmm. relationship was kind of That's frosty fair. with John mm -hmm. Curry. With Philip Fulmer, you know it's a former football coach who's going to have your back a little bit, give you a little more support, and knows what a football coach is going through. I think that helps a little bit. 
Let's hope nobody calls Johnny Majors. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have your back, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw where, I saw where Majors already has commented on it. Somebody asked him about it Friday and he kind of held his tongue, which uh, surprised me. Um, <laughs> I like that Philip Fulmer got to answer during the press conference that, no, the interim coach is not going to be me. <laughs> That's right. I meant to point that out during the show. If you, when we put up the shot of the, the YP board with all of our names up there, Philip Fulmer's crossed out and says, said no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll see. All right. Uh, in terms of a reset, where are you? Where do you think? Do you think you wind up with one of these stability hires? I do. I think this is the most uh, – you're going to need somebody who's out of work. You're going to need somebody who's got vol ties. I think that's who's going to be impressed by the job. If Philip Fulmer can go grab somebody outside of that pool, I will be most impressed. And that's not mm -hmm. a knock on Phil Fulmer. I think he's having to sell crap right now. I think so many people were wondering how come Les Miles hadn't gotten a call and how come T. Martin at least had not been contacted. Even if it's just a courtesy call. But even if you're just waiting in the airport, even whatever it is, why didn't they at least not get a call? And I think right now, Les Miles, and I've said this for a week or so now, is looking better and better. And thank God the coach from NC State did not take this job. Where would we be right now if he had? <laughs> so I'm glad you were tweeting we'll and we don't want him. you here. We'll be talking well, about no, him, I guess. I mean, if, if that's the best you were going to do, I mean, that wasn't well, going to get it done here. I, I guarantee you that. They're oh, I don't think you would have gotten support off the bat. And if you don't get support, I don't think you can do it. But I don't know that Dave Doran's any worse than Les Miles at this place. Yeah. Remember, this is the same Les Miles that Purdue and Houston didn't talk to and that no one has called this yeah. year. It's not, I keep hearing that. Why don't Tennessee call these guys? Why isn't anybody calling these guys? I mean, I heard that about Kiffin. <laughs> Who needs to get Kiffin? Everybody's going to be after Kiffin. No one's after Kiffin. He's not on the top ten list at Florida State that I saw put out by their people. So some of these guys at Tennessee, we say, by T. Martin, yeah, I'll give you that. Just as a courtesy to a former of all, build the bridge, make the call. But in terms of Les Miles, you're not trying to steal him from LSU. He's desperate to get back into coaching. I think there are a few legitimate knocks on Les Miles. At, first of all, he was at LSU and recruited well there, but out of state, results were a little more hit and miss. His offenses always were, were kind of up and down. Uh, he struggled with the quarterback position a little bit. Would his offense be necessarily any better at Tennessee? And you've already got issues there. And then on top of that, uh, he's 64 years old. Everybody thinks of David Cutcliffe and some of these other guys is older. He's older than David Cutcliffe. So I think you got to worry about that a little bit too. Josh, I'll let you wrap it up. Where do you think they're going to wind up? Uh, I would err on the side of the stability hire as well. I would, I would say that's most likely. I'm sure that Philip Fulmer will look at all options. I think that's what this past weekend uh, has been. I think that's been trying to figure out where are you in the search. But stability hire makes the most sense right now in one, terms of the likely scenario. One last question. Don't answer this based on what you know they want to hear. I want to get your honest answer. It may be what people want to hear. I was going to We didn't have time for it on the show. Here are your choices. John Curry with Mike Leach who the fans were lacking, or Philip Fulmer with the unknown. If you could go back and you, you had Mike Leach and the administration well, said, you know what, let's do it. You bring Mike Leach in because the fan base doesn't mean he's going to win, but the fan base was all excited about the pirate thing. So Curry, Leach, Fulmer, unknowns, or let's say stability hire. Where would you go? I'm going to go Fulmer unknown. I just don't think Leach is a good hire. Now, at about 1 o'clock today, their former's going to hire Leach, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, anyway, no, I, I would go former unknown. I don't think Leach is good. They're flying Leach here for the interview. They, they, just didn't want, they just didn't want Curry going to the West Coast. They couldn't afford yeah. fuel. Leach, uh, uh, Leach, Curry, or former? Well, if, if I've said that I think the most likely scenario is the stability hire mm -hmm. now, then I would probably say Curry and Leach because you at least have the entertainment value. <laughs> I didn't think you would. would. Yeah. Plus, I had this big marketing plan with the, the puffy shirts. I was going to bring it back, John. There now, you go. Now, so now it's out the window. window. Yeah. I, I think Fulmer and the, and the unknown or stability hire, I, I think people were excited about the possibility of Leach, but only under the circumstances. If that had been the hire from the get-go, I don't think people were yeah, excited. That's what yeah, that's what I was going to say. John Curry's probably wishing he would have gone to Mike Leach before he went to Mike Gundy. Yeah. And if well, he had done that, it could have turned out totally different. I just wonder if the administration, it was always out there that they were concerned about the fact that he'd been fired from Texas Tech for mm -hmm. sketchy circumstances, uh, which... I'm not a Craig James fan, and from what I read, yeah, it happened, but it was blown up. Uh, at the same time, he also sued Texas Tech. And I, I would also, if, if I'm an AD, that's not someone I would trust as my employee. 
he seems like the kind, he's Mr. Insubordinate. He kind of lives by his own rules. Uh, I would say it's, it's, I think I have more confidence it's going to turn out better with Coach Fulmer being in charge yeah. than it was trending with John Curry. And, and there still would have been a lot of questions about John Curry in the long run, too. People still wouldn't oh, have been yeah. happy with him, with Mike Leach. It would have been a mess. The funny thing, and we'll end it, but the funny thing is, you know, he got the job and people weren't happy. Brought the Lady Vols name back, uh, hired a baseball coach that people seemed to like, walks around the tailgate, shakes hands yeah. four games. You started hearing people say, I think we got the right guy. I think he's good. Greg Schiano, done with him. He's dead. Get rid of him. The approval I mean, rating in turn. mid September ahead of the Florida game, with the Lady Vol name being reinstated, yeah. was incredibly high for John Curry. Yeah, it had gone mm -hmm. way up. And it, then mm -hmm. in less than three months. Again, he should have paid attention to this show. <laughs> but you wonder uh, if, if they were, if the admin had an issue with Mike Leach and that's why they didn't want Curry talking to them, to him, I'm assuming they won't have the same issues with Philip Fulmer talking to him. I'm guessing Mike Leach is no longer on. I'm hearing that he may still be on the list, but I don't know. I don't buy that. If, if, they, don't, if they didn't, if they had a problem with Curry going there, it doesn't make sense to then go back there unless they were just looking for reasons to get rid of John Curry. Exactly. So, who knows? All right. Thank you. Uh, we need another six hours to talk about every, <laughs> everything that goes on at UT. We'll see you next Sunday, 11 a.m. on WATE 6. Also, we're going to do our final. <laughs> we pushed it this week because of the nonsense that was going on. We're going to do our final Fox 43 show Saturday, 10.30 a.m. this week. Hopefully, there will be a coach to discuss, and we can wrap up the season and put all this to bed. Thank you very much for spending part of your Sunday with us. We do appreciate it. Visit our sponsors, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>